This allegation has been quoted twice by two individual witnesses and therefore this allegation has been upheld. The investigation team apparently struck lucky. They claimed they had found two independent witnesses who had made exactly the same allegation against Jeanette. That she had been verbally abusive to residents saying, do it yourself, we're not your slaves. These two independent witnesses had also claimed that Jeanette had said that the residents treat us like slaves. Joanne Ingber had stressed to Jeanette that these were different witnesses who had said exactly the same things. She emphasised further, it's a slight coincidence, isn't it? And even further, I haven't put these words into their mouths. It appeared to be a mystery to Joanne Ingber, the investigation manager. It was also to be a mystery to Karen Johnson, the disciplinary officer, who parroted Joanne Ingber by stating that these were two witness statements from two different people, and emphasised further, two different people saying the same things. Karen Johnson was even to put the question to Jeanette, why would two people say the opposite to you? With no details, times, places, Jeanette gave the only answer possible. I have no idea. I couldn't answer because I didn't know what she was saying. So I said, if I said it, it might have been a joke or something. I don't know. And this was clearly documented in the minutes that Jeanette said, if she'd said it, that it may have been some kind of a joke. Come on, ladies, we're not your slaves, you know. Something, everyday banter, she doesn't know. All she did know is that she believed the managers when they said that they had two independent witnesses that had heard her say it. And she was clearly trying to offer some kind of explanation. When I said it was a joke or something, they said they didn't find it funny. I don't remember saying anything to do with slaves. She said she had witnesses, so I thought I must have said it, but I don't remember. So I said so that she didn't find it funny, even though I don't remember saying it. They were to take this apology as Jeanette's confession to the allegation of verbal abuse of residents. And these matters were to escalate even further when placed into the hands of Karen Johnson at the disciplinary meeting. I was thinking, how would these witnesses have heard me say these things? Then I thought, maybe I'd say it to a workmate. I don't know. I would never say anything like that to a resident. So I said to Karen Johnson, I said it to a workmate. Karen Johnson, instead of acknowledging the difficulties Jeanette was having in trying to explain these allegations, was instead to take a different approach. She was now to regard Jeanette as an unreliable witness who had changed her story. I wasn't changing my story, I was just trying to explain how witnesses have heard me. I don't even remember saying it. I then said it might be a slip of the tongue. Then she said I admitted it again. Everything I was saying was just being twisted. Karen Johnson, assuming Jeanette's guilt, was then to put the following hypothetical question to her. Karen asked Jeanette how she would feel if this language had been overheard by a resident in a room. Did she think that this was acceptable? Jeanette replied no. She was now to reinforce Jeanette's assumed guilt by putting words into her mouth in the following incriminating way. You acknowledge that when passing comments of this nature, they were in earshot of residents and residents' relatives, which you agreed was unacceptable behaviour. She said that said that in the earshot of other people is what she said, but it's not true. I don't remember saying the word slaves. I didn't say anything like that of the kind, is what she said to me. So from Jeanette saying if she'd said it, and trying to offer explanations as to how these two independent anonymous witnesses had apparently heard her saying it, we end up with these managers by again persistently refusing Jeanette's denials, not only claiming that they had multiple confessions from Jeanette, but that she was also an unreliable witness because she had changed her story. Now we come to the interesting part. Who exactly were these anonymous witnesses? Management had already expressed to Jeanette their bewilderment, this coincidence that they hadn't put words into their mouths, clearly implying that these were two totally unconnected witnesses and therefore the allegation must be true. The investigation team concealed from Jeanette that these were not two independent separate witnesses at all. They were Mr. Ikodaro, and the third person whom Mr. Igodaro had already confirmed had met up with and previously discussed Jeanette. 
These managers, knowing about this previous collusion from the documents withheld from Jeanette's investigation, knew exactly why they had said exactly the same things in exactly the same way against Jeanette. I found out afterwards it wasn't two separate witnesses, it was just Martin again. It was like they were saying it must be true because they had two separate witnesses. She said that it was a bit of a coincidence, so I said sorry. So I thought it must have been true. How again can this be possibly described as a thorough investigation in order to establish the facts? This was nothing but an interrogation to extract yet another coerced confession from Jeanette. On the strength of this further coerced confession, Karen Johnson declared Jeanette guilty of the most serious offence of verbal abuse of the residents that she loved and cared for.